Y'all, what's up? It's your boy Nitro Hot Fire here. Welcome back to the channel. This is the channel where I pretty much do whatever I want. And uh, whatever I want is somewhere along the lines of uh, talking about different things that I'm interested in, such as entrepreneurship, uh, cinematography, hip hop, comedy. Uh, like, I have so much, so many wide interests, man, that, you know, I just kind of want it an excuse to share it so here I am looking at a video that I found um, online obviously <laughs> it's called Lupe Fiasco the original Kendrick Lamar and um, I think that uh, I wanted to watch this because I saw on another video I posted on the channel where Lupe says that Drake is a better rapper than Kendrick and a lot of people in the comment section say that Lupe is jealous of Kendrick because of he has the career that he that, that Lupe always wanted and that Lupe fiasco is the original Kendrick Lamar and obviously I'm behind on that because I didn't know that that was, was going on um, behind the scenes I didn't know that uh, Lupe felt some kind of way about Kendrick and I, I don't know if it's true or not so we're gonna see if they touch on some of those bases in this video and if you guys know um, some of the, the context clues about why Lupe does not like Kendrick if that's the case or if it's not the case if y'all have more details you know post them in the comment section down below and uh, come hang out with us more often hit that subscribe button and whatnot let's hop right in Another reason I think that this comparison is a little silly is that Lupe, in a lot of respects, paved the way for Kendrick. He was one of the most significant ones in the 2000s who has undoubtedly had an impact on Kendrick Lamar's artistry and career. Would Kendrick even be doing what he's doing if not for a guy like Lupe Fiasco? If you put Lupe on a stage mm -hmm. and you put Kendrick on a stage, you say, all right, just do like some stream of consciousness rapping. Mm -hmm. Lupe is going to just spaz. Yeah. Right, right, right. Lupe is that type of dude where Kendrick <laughs> yeah. is going to just rap and rap and yeah. rap. It's going to sound dope. Yeah. He's got all of these things working for him. Mm -hmm. So the radio is already looking to him. Okay. Whereas okay. even though yeah. Lupe was that at one point, he's not been that in a super long time. Mm -hmm. okay. Now people just kind of look at Lupe as this kind of weird guy that makes these extremely complex albums. But it's funny, they look at Kendrick the same way, right. but it's just that's what I was saying. There's yeah. just a different there's a different machine working for Kendrick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A major label artist with inherent underground sensibilities, Lupe almost single-handedly spearheaded a wave of backpacker revivalism. A gifted MC from the day that he first picked up the mic, Lupe faced an interesting conundrum in that while he wanted his voice to be heard, he was adverse to fame from the outset. So much so that he famously had to be talked into the biggest feature of his career. I, I didn't even want to do Tyson Scott, God, but that won my piece. I was like, I'm over here, I don't do that. And my <laughs> partner was like, nah, you gotta trust me, you gotta do this. And then from there on, we kind of clicked up and, you know, kept it moving uh, up until this day. Unwilling to compromise his vision for opportunities mm. that others would jump at, Lupe served as hip hop's conscience and rallied against self compromising in much of the same way that K Dot does today. On Daydreaming, bars okay. such as Come on, everybody, let's make cocaine cool. We need a few more half naked women up in the pool. Showed him as a rapper who was less concerned. Bro, Daydream was fire. Like, I remember hearing Daydream when I was a kid. And, like, I don't know, Jill Scott kind of made that song like fire for me and like I, I felt like it was very classy it was like classiness mixed with hip-hop and that, that's something i really like about daydream and and, and it, i think it kind of like is what kind of put me on the, to uh to lupe as well as kick push because um you know i grew up as a in a kid as a kid who partially grew up in alabama um i was interested in skateboarding where i'm originally from in chicago uh, you see black kids skateboard all the time, but down here in the deep, in the deep, deep South, you know, black kids don't really skate like that. You know, that's considered like a white people thing. And so when I saw, you know, Lupe, you know, skating in his videos and stuff, he's doing kick push. And I was like, ah, he's talking to me. <laughs> you know, I'm kicking and I'm pushing. <laughs> all right, let's hop back in. Commercial success as he was about enlightening those around him. Rumored to have gang affiliations when growing up, Lupe, who used his landmark debut to discuss everything from domestic terrorism to America's colonial evils in foreign lands, could be seen as the original Good Kid Mad City. And to begin with, the rewards he reaped were comparable to that of Lamar. On his sophomore album, Lupe Fiasco's The Cool, Lupe immediately found mainstream success with the single Superstar and became a household name. But just as he almost became a superstar... Superstar was fire. 
Superstar Fire. I used to I used to love that one too, man. Lupe Lupe is a beast, bro. Like I never I didn't realize. Dang, I haven't listened to Lupe in so long, man. I gotta I gotta go back and play some of these, man. Star and was approached to form a supergroup with Kanye and Pharrell in the form of Child Rebel Soldier. Lupe appeared from an outsider's perspective, at least, to dislike the highest heights of fame. From the very beginning, Lupe struggled to juggle commercial pressure and what he felt compelled to say on Wax. Having discussed the difficulty in reconciling the making of accessible music for the greater good with the social responsibility he felt towards his fans, this is an issue that persists to this day for Fiasco. In later interviews, the benefit of hindsight has allowed him to articulate exactly what his place in the culture is. And for him, while the job might not be as glamorous as it could be, it is absolutely essential for the genre. Diamonds are shiny and fun for about an hour, right? But there's also a dark side to how they're created, he told the Financial Times. Have you ever seen a nightclub when the lights are turned on? It's gross. The paint is cheap, it's sticky, the floor doesn't match the walls, but in the darkness, you would never know any of this. It's my job to shine that light and expose the dark side. Eager? Bro, that, that, that's a bar in itself. <laughs> Cause nightclubs are definitely gross. Like, <laughs> like I've, I've, I've been in, I've been in some of them in the daytime, you know, you know, going in talking to business owners and things like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a. Uh, it's definitely a different scene in the daytime, but at night you barely notice it. So I don't know. I, I guess I guess that's kind of Lupe's place in the culture right now, and uh, I don't know how that's going for him. <laughs> so I, I gotta we gotta catch up with Lupe. See what, what see what's up, man. To bring what usually lurks below our society and the music industry to the surface, one thing that you can say about Lupe is that he didn't ever sacrifice his principles. Meaning that where K-Dot has been an acceptable face of rebellion, there have been moments in Lupe's career when his commitment to honesty has hampered his commercial appeal. For one thing, while everyone else was celebrating Barack Obama's ascent to the presidency, Lupe uh -huh. couldn't avert his eyes from other atrocities and social ills that were taking place before his eyes. We still dying in these streets, he wrote, wasting away in these prisons and trapped in mental slavery. And all you can come up with is vote your way out? Temporarily forced into retirement after his comments about how dirty execs were seen as anti-Semitic, Lupe's uncompromising approach meant that he was always going to have a niche audience, unless he took a more straightforward route to being a socially conscious artist. On the subject of execs, another factor which hindered Lupe from ever reaching the same heights as Kendrick would be his abundance of label issues with Atlantic Records. Woo! Precisely the sort of institution that he would normally stay away from, Lupe only ended up there due to a false promise from a hip-hop icon, Jay-Z. I'll never forget it. Jay-Z hit me like, yo, I'm coming to Atlantic Records. I'm going to be the president of Atlantic Records, said Lupe's friend and mentor, Charles Patton. So Jay's like, I'm coming to Atlantic. I need you and Lupe over at Atlantic with me. I'm like, cool. I'm thinking Jay's coming to Atlantic, so I do the deal. When I get out of jail, Jay hit me at 2 in the morning like, yo, L.A. Reid hit me and offered me the president of Def Jam. I'll give you your masters. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. It was a courtesy call on some brothers. But really, he was telling me he wasn't coming to Atlantic. Although the relationship was initially Ooh. harmonious, Lupe's momentum was halted almost immediately as he reached the height of his fame. Looking to that's crazy. Like imagine doing a, a deal like that. That's like huge for you, and then all of a sudden <laughs> you only did it because somebody said that they'll be there for you, and then out of nowhere they hit you up and like, hey yo, psych. <laughs> Devastation, bro. That's what that was. Capitalize on the success of his biggest project, his follow up record, Lasers, was originally planned for a 2009 release. However, it would be subject to a litany of delays, which would almost leave him shelved by the label. As years passed, without the record emerging, Lupe told Complex in 2011 that the situation with me and my record company has gotten to the point where it's just like, we're really at our final straws. And as they continue to meddle, Lupe hadn't. How come he look like Cat Williams in this picture, bro? Like, like, like bro, let's just like Cat Williams. No issues exposing the truth. The record company sent me a song and said, this is Lupe, you need a number one smash. They sent me the track and the hook. And they sent me seven of those. The last one is so ridiculous that when I recorded the verses and sent the record back to them, they called me back and said that they didn't like their own hook anymore and change the hook 60 times so if you tell me that my records are whack then give me great records so then you give me these records i send these records back to you 
you don't even like your own records. After protests organized by his fans, Lupe's long-awaited lasers would finally receive a release date. But while it was a victory for his fans, it wasn't necessarily a cathartic moment for an artist who had made too many compromises on his vision. One thing I try to stress about this project is, I love and hate this album. He told Complex. I'll listen to it and I'll like some of the songs, but when I think about what it took to actually get the record together and everything that I went through on this record, which is something I can't separate, I hate this album. A lot of the songs that are on the album, I'm kind of neutral to, as opposed to something like The Cool, which is more of my own blood, sweat, and tears and my own control. With this record, I'm a little bit more neutral with the love. Courtesy of the fact that- I really think that Lupe came out too early. I think, I think that's really what it falls into. Or he's not in that, and I guess in the proper age bracket to have the success that he should have had. Um, and if I say age bracket as if, you know, it's because he's old. But no, it's because that um, back then you had to go through the record labels and stuff like that. You, that, that was kind of like the thing you had to do as opposed to um, nowadays you can kind of do everything on your own. And I think that's what kind of, stunted his growth a lot because some like he's like he was saying with changing the hook 60 times and stuff like that bro like it's really difficult for you to to put a vision out there when you got so many so many hands in the in, in the pie <laughs> so like at, at some point you don't you don't even know what you're making anymore you're just making something and if it comes out terrible, it's not even completely your fault. You know, you did you did the best you could for the part that you had to play in it. But then you got all these other people that's, that's messing it up for you. So it's kind of like, what do you do about that? But he wasn't given his free reign to create his record as he'd intended. This meant that, unlike K-Dot, there are records in his discography that he feels active disdain for. Plus, even if he had a damn or to pimp a butterfly at a pivotal point in his career like the Lasers era, there's every chance that Atlantic, whose CEO apparently hated every track on Food and Liquor, may have blocked it from coming out in its original form. While he has since acknowledged that being on a major label allowed me to play 40,000 people at Glastonbury, it may have taken just as much away from his ability to become the embodiment of artistry in the mainstream that K-Dot is today. Despite the fact that Kendrick perhaps stepped into shoes that he began to break in during his early career, Lupe, who has controversially maintained that he's a better MC than Kendrick in terms of sheer... Who's a better lyricist, Lupe or Kendrick Lamar? Lupe, but... Oh, oh! Ah, uh, you you tweeted that, bro. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's kind of, bro. You not you not playing the game no more, bro. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, and why you say but for what? Though? Like, what do you mean but? Your skill holds no ill will towards him. And it's perfectly happy to give him his props. I love me some K-Dot. I always have, I always will. With that said, do I think he's a good lyricist? Yes. Do I think he's the best lyricist? No. Do I think it's lyricists that are better than him? Yes. Is he a better artist than me? Yes. Is he a better lyricist than me? No. Does he make better songs than me? Yes. Did I think Control was ridicule? No. Am I jealous of K-Dot? No. Did I personally give him his props in Chicago on stage as the next to take the crown? Yes. Is it on camera? Yes. Did I mean it? Yes. In this instance, Lupe's words suggest that while they occupy similar Ooh. spaces and have similar stances, their goals and the way that they go about it are ultimately different. And from the outset, Kendrick's work has been more approachable to the masses than Lupe's ever desired to be. I, I love Lupe's music, obviously, mm -hmm. but Kendrick does make more accessible songs. Yeah. Kendrick is really good at combining intricate lyricism mm -hmm. with an accessible mainstream capability. Mm -hmm. Lupe doesn't okay. really do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Lupe just raps. It seems like once he got into this otherworldly lyrical space, yeah. his songs just became less accessible. But Kendrick can go to that weird lyrical space and still keep his songs fairly accessible. Less Lupe accessible a... by choice. He's in this, this zone now where that's not his focus. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, given the history that Lupe has shown, could he combine the two together now? I think he can. As articulated by Dead and Hip Hop, yeah, I've always thought about that where, where artists would be to be too lyrical and it is actually, you know, something I struggled with back in the day when I was making music that sometimes like people it doesn't connect to people. And that's kinda of what I said before in another video. It's kinda of like there's a situation where the the artistic expression that you wanna give versus like the what's commercially 
viable, a lot of times it's like two different things. So, you know, it's really difficult to make something that appeases and appeals to both. And so you kind of have to make a decision on what is your goals and what are you trying to do as far as your craft. And it's I don't know what that was. Oh, that's, I know what that was now. <laughs> But yeah, it's kind of like that. You got to decide like what to do for your goals and, and your career and how you want to move about things. And I think it, I think it's I think it's a lot to say when you can look at the full spectrum of what it means to be an artist and decide to go a very specific way. And I think and when you're able to do that, that's when you kind of gain the level of being a true artist because um I can I can like I can even look at it for like from my perspective as a filmmaker, you know, I can pull out this lens here, which is the uh, Sigma eighteen and thirty five, and it's like super sharp. It makes images super clear and super perfect. Like this, this that is what this lens is for. But sometimes when I'm looking at an image that's super crisp and clean and clear and perfect. It, it it doesn't it doesn't motivate me artistically, you know, and so I may pull out a Canon FD lens. This lens is from the seventies, but you know it does something to the image that I like personally. Like it makes the image uh, it it has different effects because the glass isn't perfect because they didn't have the technology to make it perfect back then, and so. Sometimes I'd rather grab a FD lens and I know the image is not going to be as clean and as perfect as possible, but it's kind of like I can make the conscious decision to go against the grain because I have the education to do so. And I think that you don't get that until you like climb up to like a whole nother level artistically once you kind of like gain the space. It's kind of like a martial art, you know, you know, you could throw a jab, you could throw a cross. You could throw like a roundhouse kick. You could throw all these moves, but it's kind of like once you reach a certain level, and then you have uh, an opponent that steps in. Um, yeah, you can probably defeat them with a jab across and a hook easily. Sometimes you may want to you may want to get fancy. You may want to do something spinny, something jumpy, you know, something something flashy. And it's just because you gain that much more that that level of skill to be able to 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 do those things. And I, so I think that's really interesting the popular consciousness and will make adjustments to do that. While for Lupe, the craft always comes above all else. Rap for me is what I do naturally. The music business is what I choose to do, he told FT. I care about rap, but I don't care any more about the business side or selling records. I've always been a storyteller. When I was in the third grade, I wrote a play about a warring cat and mouse. I will be rapping right until the day I die. Although it may have been more of a slow burn than Kendrick acquiring a Pulitzer Prize with his third major label album, it now feels like Lupe's cultural importance has been ratified by recent moves. I've been holding this for a while, he announced earlier this year on Twitter. I'll put together something more sophisticated later that really captures the nuance and gravity, but for now, I'll just say it straight and raw. I'm going to teach rap at MIT. Suddenly mm. seen as the scholar that he always was, this okay. acknowledgement of his incredible rhyming ability isn't just in the past, as on his latest album, Drill Music in Zion. Lupe made it clear that he is still as pivotal to the culture as he ever was, garnering the sort of rave reviews that he hasn't experienced in years. Should this late career resurgence continue, it seems that Lupe may finally... I have not heard Drill Music in Zion, you know, and, I, and, and when I dove into... Um, this whole Lupe situation, I saw that he did release that project. So, your boy has got to go find that project and listen to it over the next couple of days. They get the plaudits he deserves. But if you ask him, he's ultimately content either way. In fact, Fiasco's degree of satisfaction with what he's accomplished was made all too clear when one of the culture's leading rappers argued that he deserved better. Following a tweet from Tyler, the creator, in which he declared that we didn't protect Lupe, man. The Shot Town legend responded and suggested that he was happy with his place in life. I'm still here, fam. LOL, he replied. I'm happy. Family good. Life is awesome. Make my little money doing side shows to fund my little side hustles. Whether he ever belatedly gets the voice of a generation status that he could have had or not, replied, I'm on. happy. Look, <laughs> this is make my little money doing shows to fund my little side hustles. Join the Illuminati. <laughs> 
pornography is better than it's ever been. Chill case looking promising. Lawsuit settled. Booty muscles looking 25 again. Solid. What? <laughs> Lupe Wallet in this tweet. Family good. Life is awesome. Make my little money doing side shows to fund my little side hustle. Whether he ever belatedly gets the voice of a generation status that he could have had or not, all that matters is that Lupe, much like K-Dot, has expanded hip-hop's reach in his own ways. And when it's all said and done, it seems to be all that he ever wanted to achieve in the first place. Lupe Fiasco reminds me of uh, Huey from the Boondocks. You know, he 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 has that different perspective that a lot of a lot of people don't have, and uh, I think that it's interesting to kind of see his perspective. You know, and uh, yeah, I, let's let's head over to the comment section real quick and kind of see what people are saying about it. So, who else think Lupe is way complex than your Eminem's, Kendrick's, or whoever? 2K thumbs ups on that. I ain't about to dive in no 316 replies, I'll tell you that. Uh let me see. Can I zoom this in for y'all? Oh. Hey. There we go. Okay. So Dumb It Down is still one of the dopest rap songs I've ever heard. His lyrical abilities have always been top notch to me. True. Lupe Fiasco is one of the greatest MCs to ever do it. Facts. Lupe has been the most underrated rapper. I don't know why Lupe never got the respect and recognition he deserves. The fact that he had to dumb shit down for people is crazy. Drill music and Zion fire. Ooh, I gotta catch that drill music and Zion. Alright, so Drill Music and Zion, which is an insane and dope name, is the album that it took for people to truly give Lupe the respect that he deserves as an all-time MC. He's been one of the top 10 favorite rappers of all time since my favorite time here in Kick Push. Yes! <laughs> and it was that song in particular that showed me just how different he was from the rest of the industry. Albums like well, so, ooh, Tetsu and Youth and Drogas Wave. Further confirm why he is not a major. Okay, I gotta check those out. One thing that really wasn't touched on in the video, okay, is how much timing is a factor. Ooh, remember Lupe came out in a time that the industry politics were very different. See, I said that we're talking about pre-blog era back when the closest thing was MySpace. And Hyper Beats blogs, the industry was still a dinosaur at the time, relying on radio, MTV, and BET, and physical CD sales to measure success. Kendra started his burn during the blog era, Two Dope Boys, Naira, etc. And we're starting to see a, dr a drastic shift in power and gatekeeping in the industry. Feels like Lupe was ahead of his time and arrived a little too early. Yep, Lupe is simply a victim of politics and timing from a bad industry. Deals to ah, bad industry deals to his debut fall into heavy bootlegging. Ooh. Whew, I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> it's 4.52 a.m. Uh, Kendrick avoided the politics. Lupe went through and managed to be more successful depending on how we see success in hip-hop from a general fan point of view. The difference for Kendrick is that he was able to maneuver in the industry when the right machine with the right machine behind him. Blogs, posts, Dre, cosigns, indie label, and TDE with mainstream business, acumen. So, as Lupe might have opened doors, Kendrick walked in on time and took advantage of what was given to him that nurtured his abilities and being a hip-hop star. I like that. Uh, I definitely gonna skip over. Lupe's new album is one of, uh, if not the best rap album released this year, no doubt. That was a year ago. So I, I definitely have to hop in there and see that. I gotta I gotta I gotta hop in there. Bro, my eyes look droopy. <laughs> anyway guys, uh it's your boy Nitro Hot Fire here, hop in the conversation. And uh from that video, do y'all think that Lupe was jealous of Kendrick? 
Um, that's that's what kind of brought me here in the first place. Um, they brought me here because a lot of people were saying that he was jealous. I don't know. It doesn't sound like it um, to me. But this video was dope. Hip Hop Madness. They did a good job with this one. Lupe Fiasco, the original. Kendrick Lamar. I like that. So let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. And uh, let me know if y'all like Lupe. And, and, and did y'all listen to his last album? Which I have not yet. Which I have to go get. Uh, Spotify about to go crazy. Hit that subscribe button, by the way. I'm out. Peace.